Okay, auto steer settings. I put the new board in today that uh, was on the web on um, the new PC board and took it for a spin. So I thought, well, I may as well do some auto steer settings. So here, see, just put the motor away, get it wonky, and then come on back to the line. And see, it's not too bad. It's got a pretty long look ahead. That's a yellow dot head of the head of the tractor there. Get the new Andreas arrows. Um, just going to do a U-turn and then flip the motor away and just make it go wonky and see if it can recover. And now the motor's coming back on. You can see it, it does pretty good. Over on the left hand side you can see I've got it limited to 30 degrees so it can't turn any sharper than that. Not using any roll, not using an IMU, just a straight GPS. Uh, running it at 10 hertz. See it takes about three, four, five milliseconds per uh, per frame, and then we're going to go through the settings. So you can see it works not too bad. It takes it takes its time coming back to the line, but uh, we're going to try and tune that up. Now we turn down our offline multiplier. That means as as far away we are from the line, it. Uh, makes the look ahead longer and if you reduce that like we did from 2 to 1.2 you can see the look ahead is a lot closer now you can see it pulls in a lot faster you don't want it to go too fast because then you'll cross the line but uh, see that works pretty good now proportional gain is how much air it takes to spin that motor so if we crank up the proportional gain, you can see there's not as big an effect on it. If you don't want the motor whipping back and forth, whipping, you know, the way a trimble works, ziggle zaggle on the steering wheel. Now the counts per degree is pretty is really critical. Because if you're not turning the right angle that it wants. So here now, it's way out to lunch just by going from 32 to 46. You know, it's turning way sharper than it should. You'll get that line and surprise it even recovers. I'm just narrating here. I just did a recording and then doing this back in the house. If we turn that back way down now, now remember it's not going to turn as far as it think it should. We go off the line. Now it's just going to take its time. It's never going to be right. You can see over on the left hand side under steering, it's, it's still going to think it's doing the right thing. But now it's just going to wiggle, woggle back and forth and never really get there. So that counts per degree is probably the most critical setting. So that when it says, give me 30 degrees, that your wheels effectively actually are turning 30 degrees. So that's a really, really important one. Mine's about 32. And we can see what the effect was. So either it turns way too sharp and it doesn't come back to the line, it doesn't do what the math says it should. You can see this one, it crosses over just a little bit and then comes back again. And you're right at zero. This is on a crooked field and there's hills and side hills and everything. Now the minimum pulse width, what that does is it provides a bias current or a basic amount of power to the motor to overcome the fact that it has to turn the steering wheel and you know the friction in the motor and that sort of thing. Now the higher you turn that, the faster it will be to react. If you exceed what it takes, here we turn it up to 69. Now that can you hear it? Tick, tick, tick. The motor's whipping back and forth, and the steer, steering wheels wiggle, woggling back and forth. And so that's no good either. So it's just too high. So I'm running 24 volts into the into the motor and the motor controller using the MDS 13. You know, 30, 33. That works pretty good. Just again to overcome that friction. So then it reacts faster if it. If, if pulse modulation needs to ramp up, ramp up, 
and keep getting higher before the thing turns, well, then there's going to be a delay. So that doesn't work good. I forgot to turn the proportional beam down a bit. So even though it was a bit out, if, it's, if proportional gain is, and output gain are too low, then the motor just doesn't react fast. But it's not a super critical, believe it or not, setting. You can be fairly off and, you know, it still works pretty good. Again, that uh, counts per degree, that's a critical one. Now here you can see that we're going around the corner and it's not quite turning sharp enough. It's being a little picky, but you can see the yellow inside the red on the Andreas arrow. That's the uh, yellow is the actual and the red is the desired. And we're about 28 millimeters off or 28 centimeters off. But not too bad coming around the corner. Good recovery on the corner and you're right back to zero again. So flip it away. I think I was going to drive to the ditch and just move a bit over. There. Connect the motor again to back to the steering wheel. You can see it heads nicely and recovers. Bit of a cross. back in the line. And that was from a long ways away. This is a, I think a 45 foot or 14 meter implement on there right now. Now look ahead. See the yellow dot ahead? Even though you turn it down, it's not coming back. The minimum look ahead affects how far ahead that look ahead point is. The closer it is to your pivot axle, the crazier it's going to react. It's going to snake back and forth, back and forth. And the farther it is, the more gentle it's going to be. Here now we flip the motor back. And if you heard it chatter there on the wheel, now we're just going to zoom right across the line. So here we have a unity gain greater than one, so we have an oscillation. The thing will never find its way. Start moving the look ahead farther out, and it's going to temper that down. So if it's taken way too long to come back to the for the line, it's uh, check your look ahead. Two and a half seconds works pretty good, and you know, there you can see it works pretty good. Not going super fast, I think seven, eight kilometers an hour kind of thing, or seven. So you're you're kind of set it for the speed that you want to go. Again, the farther it is ahead, the more gentle it's going to come back to that line, and longer and longer it's going to take. You turn multiply right below it, of course. That takes whatever these settings are and makes it a little a little sharper if you want going around the U-turn. Or react a little faster. See she comes in pretty good. Okay, so in summary. You can see that uh, of the of the settings, the look ahead, the amount of look ahead, and the um, the counts per degree are the two very most critical ones. Once those are set, then the other ones you can just fiddle and fine tune. But if the look ahead is too close, or if as you slow down and it's it gets closer and closer, you'll see that you'll very quickly run into an oscillation where it just can't find that line, or it takes forever to get to it because the look ahead's too far ahead. So like two and a half and two and a half. Two and a half meters minimum and two and a half seconds seems to work pretty good. Two to two and a half, that sort of thing. And uh, the uh, the counts per degree that one's very critical. So if you turn your wheels, you can use a square or a you know a protractor to measure your wheels and kind of get close. Send them to a thirty degrees and make sure it's actually staying around thirty degrees. And that'll be uh, those will be good starting points. And from there on, it just takes a little bit of fiddling and learning what your machine can do. So I hope that helps. And uh, good luck.